Hola amigos, ¿qué tal? It's Joe here from Spain Speaks with an update video today. We'll go for a bit of a drive as it is Tuesday, my normal day for doing errands. We're going to check out a supermarket because I'm trying to find milk still. Unfortunately, people are telling me to go to Mercadona supermarket, so that's where I'm going to go today. A new one has opened up here recently on the other side of the town where I'm living here, so that's where we're going to go today. And we'll also have a bit of a chat about what's going on in the country at the moment. So, uh, Benga. Vamanos. Now still a bit overcast as you can see today. Rain is forecast for today. Should be arriving a little bit later today. Uh, it's been a bit wet over the last few days, but as we all know, the rain is needed. And of course, places on the Mediterranean coast over the last few weeks have been suffering very heavy downfalls indeed. Now I'm on my way to see if I can get some milk. I'm down to my last three liters. So I'm going to try and get some today. As I said a minute ago, people have been saying, go to Mercadona. In Mercadona, they've got everything. So that's where I'm going to go today and see if that is the case. Of course, as we know, the problem with shortages uh, differs according to where you are in Spain. Here in Madrid, the situation is quite bad for certain products. But judging from what people have been saying in the comment section, their areas haven't been too bad. And uh, so we'll see what the situation is like today, considering that for the last week or so here in Madrid, there hasn't been a lot of milk available. Cow's milk, that is. There's been lots of almond milk, soy milk, and things like that. But dairy products are a little bit harder to come by. Now, as I mentioned the other day, Spain's COVID rules have changed, at least internally anyway. The government is uh, changing the way it deals with COVID from a, a health perspective. Uh, so for example, people with mild symptoms or asymptomatic cases of COVID no longer need to test, no longer need to isolate, and people can go about their day-to-day -day rather than having to quarantine for seven days, which I think it was before. It's a little bit different for people over the age of 60 they still have to test if they have symptoms uh, because obviously, as we have seen over the last two years or so, this is a virus that affects the people over 60 more than it does the younger generation. So those are the changes that have been brought in. And what's the date today? The 29th of March. If we go back one year, or even if we go back six months, it was a completely different situation regarding COVID, but uh, all of a sudden, as I said, the government wants to treat it like the flu, which is what's being done in other countries. As we know, the United Kingdom is dealing with it this way. Denmark is dealing with it this way, I think, and other countries are starting to fluify COVID-19. Not everybody agrees with this. There was quite a heated debate on the television last night, people saying that with Still quite a lot of people passing away from COVID-related uh, complications. Maybe it's not the right time to pretend that it doesn't exist anymore. Other people thinking that it is the right time because society has to start to get back to normal. So wherever you are on this debate, I'm sure that everybody has an opinion on what should be done or what shouldn't be done when it comes to dealing with this virus that has crippled the world for the last two years. And here in Spain especially, as we know, we went into serious economic problems as a result of COVID first hitting. The economy was smashed. I think it was the worst performing economy in the European Union and uh, trying to recover ever since, which uh, hasn't been easy. And of course, now we're getting smacked by this new economic crisis as a result of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. So I'll tell you what, I wouldn't like to be the government at the moment, or I wouldn't like to have been the government for the last two years, but if Pedro Sanchez manages to pull a rabbit out of his hat, uh, he could even be up for re-election. Time will tell. A couple of weeks ago, I would have said he's dead in the water, but with the aid packages or the support packages that he announced yesterday, maybe that has changed. I don't know. 
as I mentioned in yesterday's video, some 16 billion euros, I think, in aid or support. I think, uh, what did they say? There was something like uh, 6 billion in direct support and another 10 billion, I think, in what they call here government backed loans, money that the government gives to the banks and then the banks organises the, the loans to people, companies and people that need to get their hands on cash through one of these guaranteed loans. The banks are always in the middle, let's be honest, even when it comes to these state loans or this eco money, the banks are always there taking their commissions. So they are in a win-win situation as normal. And uh, we'll see if the Sanchez government package of 16 billion is enough to fix the economy. And the idea of this support obviously is to protect the economy, protect economic growth and to protect jobs. And uh, at the moment, virtually impossible for a company to fire somebody uh, given the current situation. The government doesn't want companies firing people. It wants them to hold on to workers. And that's one of the things that uh, they've got in place at the moment, that it is quite difficult for companies to lay off workers given the current economic conditions. So the government trying to protect jobs and also protect economic growth. But news out today is that uh, maybe one percentage point has been slashed off growth forecasts for this year as a result of the current crisis. Another thing that was mentioned by the government yesterday was that they're going to lower petrol prices, I think, by 20 cents. The government is going to chip in with 15 cents and the petrol companies 5 cents. So a 20 cent reduction per litre on fuel prices, which should bring the price of fuel down to around 160 1 euro 60 cents more or less I think because currently around the 180 mark maybe a little bit more we could go and check out some of the fuel prices currently all of these things are going to be approved today apparently so they should start to come into effect over the next week or so maybe even sooner so we'll see as I said whether these economic measures do in fact save Spain the problem with energy is a, an interesting one here. We saw the other day that Spain managed to break away from the European Union energy policy. That was one of the main objectives that Pedro Sánchez had to separate Spain and Portugal from the rest of Europe, uh, arguing that it's uh, an energy island, that uh, Spain's energy sources are not the same as the rest of Europe. And there's no point here in Spain having the price of electricity coupled with the price of gas, which is what happens in other European markets, considering that here in Spain, the input from renewables is greater than in other European countries. I think here in Spain, it's around 40% the energy that we get from renewables, whereas in countries like Germany, I think it's less. And of course, in those countries depend more on natural gas. So the price of gas going up means that electricity prices have been going up as well. And that's what Spain wants to try to get rid of and uh, bring down the cost of electricity in this country and uh, obviously pass that on to consumers who are suffering at the moment and people are having trouble paying their energy bills. So we'll see if that indeed does happen. But basically energy policies in this country have been terrible for the last 25 years, ever since energy was deregulated, privatized if you like. Government regulation has created chaos in the sector and uh, it led to a, an, uh, an energy tariff deficit, they called it here, because of government intervention back in the 19, late 1990s, early 2000s, where they said that energy couldn't increase more than CPI that led to a deficit. I think the deficit got up to something like 30 billion euros. It's been coming down over the last few years, but still in the billions. And uh, all of those costs get passed on to consumers. And that's one of the reasons why energy bills in this country are high. So those are things that we need to keep in mind that uh, energy policy in this country over the last 25 years has been disastrous. 
and uh, basically governments have stuffed it up time after time. For example, the Athnar government stuffed it up, the Zapatero government stuffed it up, and then the Rajoy government also stuffed it up. So that's what we're dealing with here in Spain when it comes to energy and politicians. Now I'm at the supermarket now. I'm not gonna take the camera in, but I'm gonna see if I can get my hands on some milk and a couple of other things that I need to buy. And then we'll go down and check out petrol prices. So uh, I'll be back. All right, back in action. I managed to get a couple of liters of milk. There was not a lot of milk available still. Plenty of full cream milk, but not a lot of the semi-skimmed, which is what I normally buy. So I only got a couple of liters and hopefully that will get me through to Thursday when I can buy some more. So we'll see. So that's where we're at. The transport strike still affecting supply, at least here in Madrid. And uh, to be honest, I'm not 100% sure what's going on with the transport strike currently. I thought that the government had come to an agreement with some of the main unions and we would start to see the effects of that agreement this week. But at the rogue transport union, the one that hasn't been negotiating with the government, is still causing havoc apparently. But we'll see if that uh, situation gets better over the next few days. And that's what the pro-government press is saying, that with the announcements made yesterday by Pedro Sanchez, the supply shortages should get better they should go away and uh, as i said hopefully that is going to be the case but we'll see now i'm going to go and check out fuel prices and we'll see if they do come down that 20 cents as promised by the government we'll see where they are currently today and uh, hopefully tomorrow we'll have an idea when that 20 cent reduction is going to take effect so uh, let's go and check out some petrol station prices. All right, now I'll just swing around this roundabout and we'll have a look at some fuel station prices. We'll have a look at this first one here, Repsol. Let's see where they're at regarding fuel. So 193.9 diesel, 194.9. 95 octane unleaded. Let's go and have a look at a low cost. And the low cost for diesel is 184.9 and 95 gasoline 183.9. So just between those two stations, a 10 cent difference roughly. So that's what fuel prices are currently here. You either go to one of the brand fuel chains, Repsol, Thepsa, BP, you pay that 190 plus and you go to a low cost where apparently there's no difference in the fuel quality except for the additives. You pay 183.9 was it? 184? So that's the difference there. So uh, low cost, the way to go here in Spain in my opinion. Now I'll start to wrap the video up there questions and comments please leave them in the section below let us know if the supplies are reaching supermarkets in your local area here in Spain what the current situation is where you are give the video a thumbs up if you liked it thumbs down if you didn't I'll see you in the next one hasta luego